The town decided that I had called City Hall and demanded that every flag in Smithville be taken down. The rumor spread, I mean, like wildfire. And before, and I didn't know what was happening at first because I was not on my computer. Right. People are driving by my house in golf carts with Trump flags and American flags. And then I got a death threat. So that these people have decided that I'm a piece of shit and they're gonna drive me out of town um, for something I didn't do. I walked over to the police station and I said, look, I don't wanna tell you any names. I don't wanna file a report. I wanna let you know I got a death threat. I'm new to town. Can you let me know? Will I actually be killed or are they just trying to scare me? Like, I just wanna know. And they, you know, and the guy wanted to me to name names. And I'm like, no. And the whole thing, so it culminated in, they had a parade on July 12th. They got a parade permit and it was a parade to drive me out of town, but they labeled it a patriotic parade. I knew it was a parade to drive me out of town because 90% of the city government has come to my house. I'm not even gonna tell you who, because this will just start another big ball of shit. But I would say no fewer than five city officials gave me the heads up that this was targeted at me. Rancher, author, activist, and punk rock knitter Spike Gillespie joins the Plutopia podcast this time. Maggie, John, and Scoop visit with Spike, who talks about her new home in Smithville, Texas, and the challenge of small town politics. Hey, everybody, welcome to another episode of the Plutopia News Network podcast. Our guest today is Spike Gillespie. She's an author, influencer, secular minister, provocateur, serial entrepreneur, social justice warrior, rest of us, avid knitter, aging punk rocker, dog, <laughs> great friend, and dedicated spinster. She's also known for her scones, which I wish I, I wish I had one right now. She currently lives out yonder doing cool stuff, and we're going to talk about all of that. And uh, Maggie Duvall will lead the charge today. So, Maggie. Right on. Well, I had, um, you know, I have some notes, and, you know, the way I tend to do this, like, is a little bit organically, you know. It's like there might be things we want to talk about, but, you know, things take turns, and we'll just kind of see where it goes, if that's cool with you. Hyperlinking. I call that hyperlinking. Right. Yeah. Okay. I work with that. <laughs> you know, I, I, you know, I term you, in my mind, you're like a creative polymath. And, uh, Thank serial, you. Yes. Serial micro entrepreneur you know i i've witnessed you for a number of years just you know all these interconnections and something new sparks something else i really i really resonate with that because i kind of have some of that vibe myself i just wanted to note that i first met you we haven't met in person but i met you through a mutual friend um kimmy landgraf oh i love kimmy yeah yeah, I did her website at one point. I was sitting in Cafe Caffeine in South Austin and we were talking about web and all that. And I can't remember how it came up. Maybe it was because she was knitting, right? Oh, that's um, cool. Yeah, um, I, I, she just said, do you know Spike? And, and I said, no, and she goes, you don't know Spike. You know, so, <laughs> um, so I, you know, I started checking in and then I thought of you because I, um, uh, I was at a, a South by Southwest I probably like 12 years ago, and I was at a panel about the future of fashion. And one thing that blew my mind, it was the first panel I was in where there were more people knitting than people on their laptops. So I knew there was something changing. But it is, knitting, it's an amazing thing. And it's, it's a secret, it's a secret, but it's not really a secret. Yeah, well, I just, you know, you, you've been, you've been so much of Austin and then you um, moved to Tiny T, and now you're in Smithville, Texas, correct? Yes, and, I am. You know, let's look. Maybe if we start moving to this new small town as an Austinite and work our way back and see where it goes. So, tell us how you got there, and tell us about this dust up that recently happened. Okay, and <laughs> just to let you all know, I'm really aware of the fact that as a talkative person and a storyteller. 
I do, I do sometimes go on and I know, I think we're at an hour, right? So if anybody wants to do a hand signal, like, all right, all right, we get the point. It's not going to hurt my feelings. That's perfect. <laughs> Something subtle. Would be Maybe great. those Medical. clinical signals. Medical signal. so, <laughs> so I just, you know, I had a really, um, I have to say, cause this really informs the story. I grew up blue collar. See, I still wear a blue collar, um, you know, lower class, hungry, poor, I'm not complaining, although it wasn't comfortable. And then I had my son when I was 26 and I was a single mom, again, hungry and poor. And part of the reason is I was just going to keep writing. I mean, I, I would do, I would sacrifice whatever amount of money I could get in a corporate world to write and be at home with my son. So I, I am very used to not having any money at all. And I'm fine with that. But then several years ago, uh, it's a very long story that we may or may not get into, but the short version is a high school friend of mine who I hadn't seen in, you know, 30 years, he caught wind that I was wanted to buy a tiny chapel and find a piece of land for it. Because among many things, I, I'm a wedding and funeral officiant or celebrant. Right. So um, he basically said, hey, you know, I know I haven't seen you in 30 years, but my wife and I we're looking for investments. He had gone to Wall Street. He's a nice Wall Street guy, I swear. And, um, and they just did well and they wanted an investment. And believe me, they could have done, there are so many other investments they could have done instead of buying a 30 acre rundown ranch that in its most previous life had been a meth lab in a junkyard. But they said to me, we really believe in you. And they cut me an enormous check and gave me a handshake mortgage um, because I do have a spotty uh, financial history. I had to do a bankruptcy because of a medic. I couldn't get insurance. I had cancer, blah, blah, blah. So these people were just like, we believe in you. And I used to call them and cry and be like, thank you, thank you. And they would say to me, look, it's okay. You can keep thanking us, but this is a great investment. We're adjacent to Austin. You're a powerhouse human. We love you. This isn't high risk for us. Wow. So over the six years of me working with Sean, uh, his wife is a silent partner. So it's Sean and I communicate mm -hmm. because we came from the same place and he knows my story. He never condescended. He understands that money's not my strong point because I never had any of it. And he coached me. Um, and I turned the ranch into this thing, the successful thing. All right, so now I know I'm going a little backwards to your question, but then lockdown happens. Mm -hmm. There are no weddings, there are no funerals. Uh, there are elopements. Um, I didn't panic because these same people who've been so generous with me, they called me, they said, don't panic. We're gonna get through this together. That gave me the safety net to apply for government um, aid. And then I had another business deal I made a few years ago that had just been simmering in the background. It hadn't yet matured. Right. Well, amazingly, right when the, um, the government money is coming in, this business deal I made, I'm, not, I'm being vague on purpose, but it brought me, for me, a massive life-changing amount of money. Now, it's not enough to retire on, you know, it's not a million dollars, but right. for me, it might as well be a hundred million dollars. Good for you. That's great. So I was, every, the joke with me is everybody's like, okay, we better encourage her to invest that or she's just going to adopt dogs and buy yarn because that's what <laughs> I'm about. So all of this is happening and I thought, okay, well, I'll try finding a house in Austin. I thought the market was going to crash in September because of COVID. Well, that was a joke. I gave up after a couple of months. I wasn't in any hurry. I gave up. And then a friend of mine, my friend who was just here, he had his real estate license for one week. I don't even know if he walked into this house or if he only saw photos. And he said, I, I saw this house and I really think it's your house. Wow. Now, this is not a guy who was trying to sell a house because as right. soon as he sent me the photos, I was like, this is my house. This is so weird. I felt like I'd been in it. So that particular day, the funding hadn't come in yet from the, from the, my business deal. I had a hundred dollars in my right, like my business bank account, but I was so smitten. I put on my t-shirt that says, Lord grant me the confidence of a mediocre white man. And I started calling banks and it's, well, it's how it happened. So I wound up in this palatial estate. It's two buildings. It supposedly was a whorehouse. It was a boarding house. 
It's around 4,000 square feet. I had my housekeeper wow. come yesterday and it took her 12 hours to do half of the house. Like, wow. it's, and I never, ever, ever, ever would have thought to move to Smithville, would have thought to buy a big house. And then I realized I've got to open a business because I, it's just, I need to do something. So right. then I, I opened this knitting shop. I don't even remember your original question, but hopefully I kind of answered it. <laughs> well, it's kind of like how you got to Smithville, but also we're going to go into how you've been in, um, embraced or not by Smithville. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> so I have told this story now 700 times in the two weeks since it happened, and I think I can get it down pretty fast here. <laughs> so I, I moved in like around, I don't know, the beginning of June. I had leased right. back to the owners. I moved in very slowly because I still have my ranch, which is very like, I just, I have to always stop and acknowledge this. Yeah, I work hard, I'm smart, I'm white, and I've been doing this for a long time, but I really, really believe that there is a random element, right? I mean, I, when I, it, you can tell it makes me uncomfortable to talk about money and success because too many people in our society, I think use it for a hierarchy purposes and that creeps me out i'm a can i say that can i cuss on this date i hear absolutely great i'm a fucking communist and i am just having the best time using my money to help give people a leg up the way that my business partner did for right me. so right. i got here and it's so fun oh my gosh it is so fun to just randomly drop a little gift into somebody's Venmo and say, remember that time you such and such, or gosh, uh, I heard you're having a hard time. It's completely fun. But when I got here, so I'm so I'm ecstatic, right? I'm yeah. a spinster. I'm living alone. I've eliminated men from my life. Sorry, guys. And I, I'm just like, I'm ecstatic. Yeah. I have enough money that I can take maybe a year off and I'm opening a knitting shop. Like it is so happy that I, I actually called my uh, physician's assistant at some point I said I think I might need to lower the dosage on my antidepressants I'm just so happy all the time and she oh. said no 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 that's what happens when your brain gets regular like your ser serotonin le levels up but I can't express to you like how completely psyched I was to be in this town and Absolutely. I grew up in a small town and I when I move somewhere my job is it, it's, it's like when I travel internationally observe the culture. Yeah, I don't have to kiss anybody's ass. Right. I don't have to be like them. I don't need to put a Trump sign in my yard, but they were here first. And I know that that's a strong feeling. I used to have that in Austin. Uh, right. How dare I? I'm from right. fucking New Jersey. And I would be like, you can't move to Austin. So when I moved here, most people were just so nice. And then one morning there was a flag on my front lawn. It was plastic. I'm sorry. It was actually on the city side, but it was in front of my house. It was touching the ground, I think. I don't know. And it had a, a business card stapled to it. And they were all over the town. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this had nothing to do. Well, it had a little bit. It did have to do with politics because I threw the flag out and on my personal Facebook wall, which is open to the public because right. I'm a public figure or whatever they call it right. and uh i just wrote like i don't feel any allegiance right now i don't feel allegiance in a country where britney spears has to wear keep her iud in and white cops are shooting black men for sport during the george floyd, floyd trial like i'm not feeling very allegiant i'm right. not feeling allegiant in a country that shits on me as a woman i'm just like i'm not buying it okay so then i don't somebody else entirely contacted the city and it turns out it was a military vet who said in a very long clear cut letter look this is flag code violation number one you can't use it for advertising number two that half the city hates this that you do this every somewhat this real this person excuse me does this every year so i wasn't alone but there is a very vocal group here um of extremely conservative, extremely vocal people. And yes, they have Trump flags and they have American flags. What these people didn't understand, and I feel a little defensive saying this, I almost feel like, you know, people will say like, well, I'm not racist, I have a black friend, right? I don't wanna mm -hmm. fall into that category, but a truth about my life is when I left Austin, where I would lead protests, Molly Ivins was my mentor. Nice. I'd be at the front of the line saying, 
fuck you conservative assholes. I do not deny that, nor do I regret it. I feel pretty good about it. But when I got to the ranch, it's a very small, very rural community. I knew what I was heading into politically. Here's how I made friends. It's the same way I make friends everywhere. I wanna know your dog's name. I wanna know who your plumber is. I want to know who the local people are and I'm going to hire them if they're good workers to do the work. Right. I didn't, I didn't make friends over politics. I was a, like one of five liberals out there. We made great friends. And the best example I can give is um, a couple of months ago, a woman, I didn't even know she was my neighbor. She contacted me. Her husband had died very suddenly. She wanted to rent the ranch for a funeral. And when I found out she was my neighbor, I said, Jenny, you're a neighbor. You're not giving me a dime. I mean, that's just what we do in the neighborhood. I let people get married or buried there, whatever, not buried, but do their service. Right, right. So Jenny, um, she comes down to talk to me and she's a big old Trumper. She would love that I was saying that. She'd be like, that's right, Spike, go Trump. (laughs) And And we just bonded so much over everything. And it culminated, there was this bizarre accident at the ranch. And I'm not gonna go into the details because I'm still really fucked up from it. But one of my animals, I have livestock, was injured seriously, mortally wounded and suffering and not dead yet. Uh It was Memorial Day. I was here with company at my house um, and I wanted that goat put out of its misery immediately. Do you think I called my liberal hippie friends in Austin? (laughs) I did not. I called Ginny and I'm like, Ginny, who's got a gun? She's like, well, everybody, right? I'm like, great. Could somebody go shoot my goat? And I would have done it. Um, It would have broken my heart. I'm a vegetarian, but if you have a ranch, you have to be willing. But she just, we, my point, and I know you, sorry, guys, quiet. I know you guys understand my point, but just to overemphasize it is like, I make friends with people based on who they are. Right. right. I had an 89 year old roommate who was a big time Republican and he was the love of my life. I do not give a shit about people's politics. Right. Right. But the town decided that I had called city hall and demanded that every flag in Smithville be taken down. The rumor spread, I mean, like wildfire and before, and I didn't know what was happening at first because I was not on my computer. Right. People are driving by my house in golf carts with Trump flags and American flags. And then I got a death threat. So I was like, okay, and I'm going to let you ask a question in a second, but I'll wrap up this little piece of it. I grew up in a town smaller than this. My father was the bully. I didn't have many friends or anything because everybody was terrified of him. I've been in therapy for 30 years. I'm on medication. I do meditation. I have, I do EMDR. Like being the child of a bully fucked me up beyond fuck up, but it also fostered great compassion, which you can Mm -hmm. relate to. I'm always for the underdog. So that these people have decided that I'm a piece of shit and they're going to drive me out of town um, for something I didn't do. I walked over to the police station and I said, look, I don't want to tell you any names. I don't want to file a report. I want to let you know I got a death threat. I'm new to town. Can you let me know? Will I actually be killed or are they just trying to scare me? Like, I just want to know. And they, you know, and the guy wanted to me to name names. And I'm like, no. And the whole thing, so it culminated in, they had a parade on July 12th. They got a parade permit and it was a parade to drive me out of town, but they labeled it a patriotic parade. I knew it was a parade to drive me out of town because 90% of the city government has come to my house. I'm not even going to tell you who, because this will just start another big ball of shit. But I would say no fewer than five city officials gave me the heads up that this was targeted at me. It was originally oh. going to go by my house. And when they figured out what was going on, they rerouted it. Um, they, they had a detective staked out on my porch for hours the night of the parade. The police patrol my house perpetually. So when I sit on my porch to be a spinster, I have, first there'll be, um, a golf cart with Trump flags and glares, and then another one, then there'll be a cop. And it it triggered my PTSD. Like I haven't had suicidal ideation in two and a half years. And I thought, I'm gonna hang myself. 
out uh -huh. front from the magnolia right. tree. That's really graphic, but it's like, no, how can yeah. I get through to these people? How can I let them know that what they're doing to me is bullying? I don't right. give a fuck if they like Trump. That's cool with me. Right. But that they're just going to bully me until I crack. And I'm a strong, strong person. I nearly cracked. I spent every night shopping for property in New Mexico or Tennessee, places I love. They, they took a huge toll on me and it, it was horrible. And there's another really big piece of the story, but I'm gonna let you talk now. Well, this isn't politics. Mm -hmm. That's one thing I would say. I mean, we think about it as politics and they're conservatives and so forth, but you know, we all know conservative people that we get along just fine with. Uh, our neighbors, we were just talking today about their Trumpists. We get along fine and, and we get, and just avoid talking Smithville. politics. The mayor yeah. of Smithville is my new BFF and she's a cons I would vote for her in a heartbeat. Yes, yes. So these guys are like you said about your dad, they're, they're bullies and they've been inspired by a guy who was a bully. And what they're doing has, I, from my perspective, it doesn't have anything to do with politics. It's more like culture war. And, it, and it's so painful. I had heard about this cancel culture thing and I was, I just, I try to tune out the news a lot. I tuned in during the elections. I can't help myself, right? Molly Ivins was my mentor, right. but now I'm back to tuning it out. And uh, I forget where I was going with that, but something about, I don't know, something about the bullying. It's just, it is culture war. Oh, cancel. Like, I didn't really know what this cancel culture was. And somebody said, oh, they're trying to cancel you. I'm like, oh, that, oh, this is what it means. You know, and like from a from a perspective of like, um, I have security. I have job security. For the moment, I have financial security. Except for this recent incident, my my mental health has been better than ever before. Right. I can take care of myself. I don't need to be here. Like I'm choosing to be here. And they're saying, well, you don't belong here. Now, let me also add this. Now that my PTSD has calmed down um, and I've blocked, I realized it was a small handful of people. I couldn't say, here's what I can't make them understand. I explained this to, there's one neighbor who's says she's liberal, but the other day I asked her if I could have a hug because I ran into her and she actually burst out crying and she said, I'm afraid to hug you. She said, because I don't know if you're right or if these people are right, but I'm scared of you. It was heartbreaking. Oh. It was heartbreaking, but she also worked really hard to be accepted in the community. And I just, I mean, the, another woman who was there was just hug her. And I said to her, no, no. I always ask people like what their boundaries are. It's okay. And she was like, I'll hug you, I'll hug you. And she was crying and crying. And I was like, this is like, this is not about Spike. People pointed this out to me. We just came off of like 4th of July is a big day to activate. And I'm just, I just stepped in a huge pile of shit. Now I went out one day for tacos. This is so hilarious. And Maggie, you probably know the story. I swear to you that I was absolutely possessed when I went to get tacos. I think I was possessed by Bob, my old love, who's dead oh, now, yeah. who was a, such a staunch Republican, but he plays <laughs> these pranks on me from the dead. The guy at the taco store is beautiful and shiny and smiling. And he looks at me and he goes, are you Skip? Because people always mess up my name. I said, no, I'm Spike. And he goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, and he told me who his roommate was. And she's an old acquaintance of mine. And I, and he's making my vegetarian tacos. And he said, do you want anything else on these? And I, I honestly, I do not know where this came from. I just looked at him and I said, do you have any meat of the children of Republicans? <laughs> and I, I, I like my own self, I was so shocked. I, I recoiled <laughs> and I said, I'm so sorry. And he got the biggest smile on his face. And he said, you know, my mom is the one who did the parade. <laughs> oh my God. And I said to him, I am so sorry. I am so sorry. I'm not trying to insult your mom. I'm just like, I think what it was now that I've had time to think of it, like I laughed through my grandmother's entire funeral. I didn't think it was funny, but it's a nervous reaction. 
So I've been walking around this town waiting for people to, to shoot me. And here's this guy being nice to me. So I guess I thought, okay, he's safe. And, um, and he was safe because he's, he's really nice. I really loved meeting him, but I should never have said that. Even, no matter who his mom was, I, was, I wasn't taking the high road, you know? Yeah. And, and something else that this woman who wanted to hug me, who was crying, I, this is what I said to her. I said, I can't make you understand. Look at that cat too. <laughs> I can't make you understand this if you don't have PTSD. But since I got triggered, I'm not thinking about politics or Smithville. I kept looping to this. My dad punched me, tried to punch me in the face twice. Once he succeeded, the other time I ducked. But that second time I was 23 and he was so close to me that I could see his eyes. And it was like, there was so much hatred. There was so much hatred. It was so terrifying. And so for the, after these, I was triggered by these events, I spent two weeks and I just kept seeing my father who's been dead forever now, thank goodness. And he's just coming at me and he's coming at me and he's coming at me. I'm in the moment. It right. doesn't have jack shit to do with, with Smithville or this woman hates me or that guy wants to pull, put a bullet in my ass or here comes 15 conservatives to say, we love you and we picked flowers or we made you a card. When I'm that raw, uh, the, another analogy I have is I very briefly in my life, I would protest at abortion clinics. And it dawned on me that if you're going in for an abortion, which I have done, you're not stopping to scrutinize the fine print. We love you, we support you. You're just like every fucking person here hates me right. and wants to kill me. So Play that, focus on that. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I was so raw from this bullying that I think I cried more from the kindness of people than from the meanies. And I'm going to tell you, this is so, it's so important for me to say, and I'm not bullshitting so that people will be nice to me. The kindness I have encountered in this town is mind blowing. Like the people are so nice and so supportive. And now they've all looked me up online. They all know who I am. They know my past. Um, there's no way for me to convince most of them. And it's not my job. I moved here to be anonymous or, or anonymous compared to who I was in Austin. Right. I'm still gonna write. I'm still gonna share some of my views. But as far as like walking down the street goes, when I lived in Austin, everywhere I went, people knew who I was. My son said, he's 30 now, but I said, did you, how'd you feel about that? He said, mom, I loved all the free concert tickets and I hated buying milk with you because it would take six hours and I loved it. It wasn't like I was a celebrity. I just knew everybody. Mm -hmm. Here, I just wanted to be quiet, meditate and paint and the opposite happened. Every single person, I feel it feels right. like. Right. There's probably probably 20 people know me, but it feels like everybody does. It's right. nerve wracking. Your uh, experience there in Smithville uh, is similar to what I'm, I'm almost a neighbor. I'm south of Elgin here in the same beautiful <laughs> redneck county of Bass yeah. Drop. And when I moved out from uh, the Bay Area, I was there for a long time and bought a place here in the country. I thought it was, you know, close to Austin, it was going to be nice and liberal and, and enlightened. And boy, was I wrong. Yeah, <laughs> I went into the local redneck bar and immediately ran out. <laughs> <laughs> Just reading the stuff on the walls, yeah. uh, you know, pictures of, Ob of Obama with a, uh, uh, a gun sight on his head, that yeah. sort of thing. <laughs> but I was fortunate I went to a local uh, event, uh, Western Days, and they had all sorts of uh, interesting people out there, a lot of arts and crafts people. But I met Doc Jackson, this African-American man who is you know, now on the city council in uh, Bastrop. And he was the first progressive person that I met in Bastrop County. And I told him how, you know, disappointed I was in the things I was seeing. He said, no, 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 you need to get around more because there are always assholes everywhere you go. And you've been unfortunate that you just encountered the really prominent ones. And getting around, I 
found a lot of those nice people. So, I, you know, they're here, but also <laughs> they're the ones that you've encountered that are not so nice. Yeah, it's it's like to me, I kind of draw the line at death threats, you know, I'm, and, I, and I've heard from many other people who when they first moved here also received death threats like that seems to be for some people in this town that seems to be the go to oh you bought a house we don't like the looks of you uh, death threat, you know, and it's like, come on, you can be more creative than that, you know, so then I of course get wound up and I thought all right well what am I going to do. I bought a flag that says the beatings will continue until morale improves, which fla flies over my house. And then I bought a cauldron and I was going to paint, I eat children on the cauldron. <laughs> but you see, this is me getting hooked in. Right. Like I meditate, right. I used to go to recovery meetings. That's a, that's a topic for another day. But if I'm gonna like walk the walk of being this like quasi Buddhist that I claim to be, or if I'm gonna walk the walk of the crone, did you see my sneakers, Maggie? Did you see my new sneakers? Oh, I got, yeah, I was- I'm yeah. having them custom made. And if I'm really gonna be that person, and if I'm really gonna protest like mean people suck, well, I gotta not be a mean person. And I'll tell you what, I growing up with the town bully, I didn't even know that I had these moments of being mean. I had so, a childhood friend told me many, many years ago, they were, he was like, when I met you, we were teenagers, you were the angriest person I knew. I'm like, really? I didn't know. I was raised in so much anger. That was just my language. So I'm sure if, I don't think my neighbors really give a shit about me. I think I was just a, like a token, but right. like if they would even care to dig in and research that, I speak their language. I come from what they come from and I don't even begrudge them like whatever. It's not my place. They're they're, they get to choose their life. I get to choose mine. But like a friend pointed out, because she's been targeted for ever out here, it's like, it's that she perceives, I should say this, I don't want to put words in her mouth. But the perception is that it's like, I'm a liberal. And that means there's room inside my belief system, you be a conservative, none of my business. Whereas the sense that I get from these small vocal group. I don't want to call them conservatives because I have so many conservative friends. Right. We'll just call them the bullies. Yeah. So for the bullies, right? Uh, I Whatever. I lost my train of thought, but they just, it's not okay. That Okay. In their circle, there's not room for me. There's not room in their mindset. Like, well, dang, we live our life. And isn't that great? Other people live theirs. And the great irony is I, I, I blocked as many as I could figure out, but for a very, very, very small period, I looked at some of their Facebook posts. I wanted to see what they look like because I don't know right. who's going to shoot me. And like, this isn't going to surprise any one of us at this, in this conversation. They're all like, I love Jesus. I love Jesus. You know right. what? I live next to a church and the bells go off every hour. And it reminds me of when I was raised as a Catholic against my will but it's reminding me of the gospels and it's, it's making me want to be like Jesus. And if anybody's listening and is misconstruing this, like John Lennon, like I just said, I'm Jesus. No, I am a Buddhist going back to my, the, the most essential beauty of my fucked up religious upbringing, which you can boil it down to the same two words, every religion, as far as I'm concerned, be mindful be mindful, you know? Catholic church didn't work for me anymore for a bunch of reasons. One of them being that I was sexually assaulted by my priest cousin. And like, I, it's, I feel like this conversation, which is more of a soliloquy, is like, I feel like I'm projecting on you guys. Like I'm talking to my neighbors saying, guys, guys, you got it all wrong. I love <laughs> Jesus too. Come on, let's talk about Jesus. Another neighbor who is ex-military came over and he said, there's so many nice people here. There are so many nice people. And he goes, I'm here. I live two blocks away. Here's my phone number. I'm ex-military and they respect wow. me in this town. And then he said, I have a piece of advice for you. It's yours to take or leave. Everybody knows I hate advice. He said, but if I were you, I would not go out of my way to be overly nice, to overcompensate, because that's just going to get them even more wound right. up. Right. And, I, and I, I hated that advice because part of me wanted to run up and down the streets and say, hey, everybody, 
it's it's okay it's okay it's just me and that's not that's that's my, that's my mental illness talking you know well, i spent i spent to... many years studying buddhism and after all of that like fairly recently i discovered that repentance is a part of buddhism and it's, it's, all, it's like i, I didn't so really get it overlaps there are so many overlaps yeah well and i also um i applaud you for like going back to like the essence of of the spirit of of how you were raised and not the 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 dogma right and i just wanted to share an example my my mother and i went my mother taught me a different Jesus than the Jesus you're talking about that these people believe in, right? You know, there was the love, the gentleness, the kindness, the compassion. And a great example was she took me to see the, um, the, the, the premiere of The Last Temptation of Christ oh. <laughs> when I was like 18 or whatever. And we're standing outside of the theater, you know, remember all those protests that happened, right? Yes, and yes. And there was this man who is just spouting out scripture and he's getting up in my mother's face. She had nothing, you know, she was just coming to, he was so angry that she would dare to go see this film. So he's in her face and he's spitting on her, you know, the scripture and my mother, I, I, I just admired her. So she was in herself. She was fair. She was totally rooted and grounded and she would just counter gently with, something from the new testament something that christ said you know and and all that and the more she stood in her integrity the more wound up he got and, and he lunged at her and started to choke my mother and thank god there were cops there right but wow. it was like you know but but she felt you know she she was i was proud of her she was proud of herself because she did not get reactive she was just like I will counter this with, you know, and, and all the art you're creating, all the, you know, what you're sharing online about how you're trans, trying to transmute this. Continually I'm trying. I mean, it's hard. it is not easy. It is not for right. the you know, faint hearted, which I didn't know getting into it. It's, I stumbled onto what feels like I'm not on the path. I feel like I've reached the sign that says the path is 2,000 miles away, but I'm, I'm moving, like Thich Nhat Hanh says, right, we don't get to the North Star, but we head in the right direction, and so, oh, and this is funny, too, so I have this assistant, I love him to pieces, his name is Dave, he's my son's age, he's exactly nine months older than my son, I haven't told him that yet, I don't have freaked <laughs> out, but um, he, uh, he was raised evangelical in a large family, and so I wasn't raised evangelical, but very fire and brimstone, and he also thinks differently now. And so it's not, it's not that we sit around like, oh, that stupid church. But what's hilarious, I think, for us is that we both know the Bible. And so when I was having these revenge fantasies, I have this huge fence I have put up, not to, just to keep the dogs in. And I was like, oh, I could paint on there. Fuck all y'all. Or I could paint on there. <laughs> This is, I love doing revenge fantasy when I'm in PTSD and I've got a great revenge uh, bit that I'm, I'll tell you about if you want to hear it. I did the most wonderful thing. But I, I, uh, I was like, Dave, I sent him a note. I said, your job for this week is to come up with some really scary ass Old Testament quotes that we can slap up on this. <laughs> I'm not going to do that, but this is my laugh because it's like, it's not like we don't understand these people. I'm not saying we would be best friends with them, but I've got the Christian foundation. Right. I can't shake that up. I love Jesus. I love yeah. Jesus as a rabbi. I right. can't get into the, um, we don't need to go into all that, but I, I love Jesus as a rabbi. You know, I don't know a lot about Muhammad. I, I know a little bit about Buddha. Um, and I just feel like there's some pretty basic good principles. But the thing I did, which I wasn't going to tell you, do you want me to tell you? Yeah, do it. Do it. I want to hear okay. it. Because <laughs> I'm going to write a piece about this and I'm going to pitch it to the New York Times. Okay, well, I got this. Um, I, I have to go back and check the dates on this. My brain is a blur. But somebody, people were leaving all these gifts, right? Flowers, cards, food, everything. And there was a, a paper bag and it had homegrown tomatoes in it. And it had a little note and it said, welcome to the neighborhood. And it was signed by my neighbors. And I wrote, I, there was a phone number. So I texted and I said, oh my gosh, y'all, 
There's no better gift than a homegrown tomato. I mean, I'm from New Jersey. I think everybody knows that, but that is like, there's nothing better than a homegrown tomato. So I said, thank you. I hope you'll come hang out on the porch sometime. More sort of in a general way. We do a lot of arts and crafts on the porch, the knitting stores in the house. Yeah. So this woman pulls up the next day. We're just going to call her Mandy. That's not her real name. And she says, I'm Mandy. And I go bounding down the stairs. I'm like, Mandy, can I give you a hug? She's like, yeah. So we hug. She comes up. She stays for a couple of hours. And she's talking. And she's been in the neighborhood. And there were some other neighbors here. But no one really told me who, how she fit into the community. And then um, she, oh, she said to me, I never use Facebook. Like, she's in her 30s. And she's like, it's just, it's too, nerd, like, too upsetting. And my son had recently said something similar to me. Like, I don't like anybody telling me what to do, but these young people are saying, you know what? Maybe just take a little break from the social media. So I thought, you know what? That's two people in two days telling me this. I think I might slow down just until my brain chemistry comes back. Right. And she, and then, so I'm not on Facebook. Somebody, I get home and somebody sends me a screenshot from next door. Look. I'm not even stupid enough to get on next door, which is the most horrible thing ever created. This woman ran home, posted on next door, completely made up a story about how this parade was going to be all about patriotism. It wasn't going by Spike's house. Well, I found out she's married to this hardcore council member who worked for Rick Perry for years. Oh, and he, campaigned, oh, oh. he campaigned in Smithville and he brought Rick Perry in to campaign for the seat. Now, the way she told me the story was, she said, oh, my husband's a council member. She never identified who he was. And she, sa and she said, oh, it was just like, there was just a seat open and nobody would take it. So he was like, well, I guess someone has to do it. Well, I've since been to the guy's website and that's like, a huge burning pile of shit. Like she totally misled me. And what she didn't tell me was that she and her husband rented the little train. They have a little train here, like the Zilker Zephyr, and they were going to head the parade up to drive me out of town. A council oh member. My God. But what she said to me before she left was she said, Oh gosh, I have a golf cart. Why don't you be in the parade with me? And she was leading me to believe, like, we'll show those people. But I think she wanted to get me there so that they could make a mockery of me. Oh, my God. And I thought, and then I thought, okay, you're being paranoid, right? But I, I backed up. I'm like, she seemed really nice. And, I, you know, my brain chemistry is really off right now. I cannot tell you how many people came to me to tell me, like, stay away from those people. They're like, they, they, they illustrated to the nth degree these underhanded, mean spirited right. bullshit that people do. Right. I like, I mean, I don't want to get involved in politics, but I was angry enough. I thought, man, I'm going to run against that fucker. I'm not, but I, you know, it's terrible. <laughs> so here's what I did for revenge. Because even though I'm a Yankee by birth, I've been in the South for a long time, like <laughs> 40 years in the South, right? Do you want to guess what I did? <laughs> I didn't shit in a pie and deliver it to her because that's already been done. Right. She had, when she was sitting on the porch being my friendly neighbor, right. I said, oh, Mandy, my friends slept over last night and they reminded me that I'm a slob and I'm always going to be a slob and I better get a housekeeper. I have a housekeeper at the ranch, but I thought, you know what? That's extravagant, Spike. Learn how to pick up after yourself. But another friend of mine said, no. She said, you live like a man. A lot of men have artists, have women running around behind them. You're not doing that. And it's true. So I said, I really need to get a housekeeper out here. And Mandy said, I have a great housekeeper. And she gave me the housekeeper's number. I stole her housekeeper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's very Southern. <laughs> And I cannot verify this for y'all with documentation, but I have, I have more than a strong feeling. I have solid, absolute core belief that these people are paying her shit. Oh yeah. And, I, and part of the reason that she could come over and do my house is because they canceled on her, and they didn't pay her for canceling because they're on right. vacation. 
let me tell you, here's how I judge people. I don't care if you're a Republican or Libertarian or, or Democratic. I care about how do you treat the people who work with you? And I told my housekeeper, I said, you don't work for me. You work with me if you choose to work here. We are co-workers. You're allowing me to do my art. And I, I hugged her so many times yesterday. I was practically crying. And I, and I think she was like, I think maybe I worried her like, is this the freak lady? Because that's not how she's treated. And it reminded me, and my housekeeper is a person of color, which is something else that I have always had stress around, but she really wanted the work. So, okay. But I, I heard this amazing piece on NPR right after the Obamas came in and they interviewed the staff of the White House. Oh my gosh, I can't, this is so emotional for me. It's so emotional. The White House staff, A, their staff, right? So they're servants and B, a lot of them are black. The Bushes would not speak to them. The Bushes would right. not speak to their servants. Yeah. The Obamas are buds with their servants. And right. it's not like, for me, that's about, we're human. We are all equal. I'm a Buddhist. We are one. Right. Yeah, I get family. I get money, I get stuff for being who I am. Right. I am not any different. Not only am I not any different from this woman who graciously cleaned all my toilets and clean up my dog fur. I'm like, I think she should get paid more than, oh, I, I doubled her pay. <laughs> on. That's amazing, I love it. It's, it's kind of like weird awesome. to think of somebody as being a servant, you know, it's, right. it's a strange thing. We have somebody who cleans our house, but she's just one of our pals, you know, and yes, it just happens so that I we pay her money to clean our house, you know? Absolutely. And I, and I asked her, will you come for dinner sometime? And she's like, nobody ever asked me that before. Wow. And I, but this is like, this is not me going overboard to get right. the city of Smithville to look at me. I think, I mean, I know we haven't met in person, Maggie, but I think you get a sense that this is what informs my life. When you talk about your mother, and by the way, I lived in Tennessee, and I say those preachers, they could be reading from a cookbook. Two cups of sugar! <laughs> One cup of flour! It doesn't matter what they're saying. They're just angry. You know? Angry. Yeah. And I I was angry, and I'm not angry. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm to get wound up. <laughs> but I'm trying so hard now. Don't be angry. I'm trying to do what would Jesus do? Jesus would look at all. This is Jesus's crowd that's like going after me. He would, right. I don't know what would he say, but like people sit down, have a snack. Like there's one bag of trail mix. I'm going to make it last for all of you. Right. Yeah. 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 There, there's when, you know, as I've been reading your journey uh, since you've been there, all I could think about is that line from Burroughs Thanksgiving day of, decent church going women with their mean pinched bitter evil faces <laughs> yeah like and it's, if, and it's, if you're so if you're so in the spirit of the religion why are you so angry why are you so bitter why do you spend all your time trying to you know cheat and and hurt people and i i don't i never i've never gotten it you know well and it, it puts up walls it puts right. up walls and but i again um i i do understand it because i grew up with it you know right. i get it it's fear-based right. i operate in fear a lot i do want to give another example and this is a neighbor i'm not i am not naming any names but i met most initially i met most of my neighbors because i have this wraparound porch and it's a it's a pretty main thoroughfare. People walk by with their dogs. I want to say like that's why I meet people. I don't want to yeah. anything else. But like, tell me about why you love dogs. I love dogs. So I met a neighbor who walks her dog by every morning, and we just chat, and we got to a little friendship going. And then, and I had no idea what her politics were, and I she could probably guess. I you know you not always, but visually when you're covered in tattoos and speak at the volume I do you might be a little <laughs> um anyways she um when all this shit started going down she just continued at her pace and continues at her pace out of friendship not out of pity not out of saying hey we're not all bad just because she's an awesome beautiful wonderful person who wants to be friends and I want to be friends with her and she just will check in on me every day are you okay do you want someone to walk with you 
Right. Um, and it's, that's what calmed me down. That's what got me calmed down is uh, her friendship. Right. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Oh, and I also what makes me sad is like, I posted about this. I would love, it would only be perceived as a hostile act, which is why I did not accept the invitation to be in the parade. And that worked out for me. I said to her, I said, I'm not a hostile person. I'm not going to be in this parade, no matter under what circumstances. But the woman who really started the parade and then got these council member people on board, right. when her, I wanted, I wish I could contact her and say, Jeannie, I met your son, Kevin, and he is a beautiful person. He was so kind to me. And when I fucked up and was said something really rude, he was even more kind to me. And I think surely you must have done something right to have a human being right. like that. Right. I can't say that to her. I mean, I don't know, maybe someone will watch this video and tell her. And that, I can't get back on the right foot in Smithville. They can watch me be boring, my version of boring for a year. They can watch me not do protests. They can watch me not eat children. They can watch me knit on the porch. That's the only way maybe one or two of them might think, well, she's not such a horrible hag. But I once the wall once the wall of hate goes up, right. I think it's embarrassing for people to climb over and say, oh my gosh, I was wrong. It's humiliating. Right. I had a boy, yeah, I had a boyfriend once who my son's father couldn't send child support because he was dying of alcoholism. And I knew that his parents gave money to all the other grandchildren and they didn't owe me any money. It wasn't like that. But the, the mom would send these ridiculous little Christmas gift tchotchkes, like an, a, an angel for the tree made of a noodle. And I, I would be like, God, I don't have food for my kid. And my friend would say, well, just boil the angel and eat the angel, you know? And a boyfriend of mine said to me, you know, it's probably that they feel embarrassed that their son isn't there for their, you know, for, for our kid. Like, it's like they're the way that they're coming at it is they judge me or they ignore me or they don't give their grandson the same treatment they give to others. And when he gave me that fear, I thought, yeah, you know, that's kind of what it feels like now. Even if somebody wanted to come and knit on the porch, if they've already identified themselves as I hate Spike. Right. I know from my own experience, once I put up that wall, I never climb back over it. Right. You know, right. Well, we're gonna we're gonna have to wind up soon, but there's two thoughts in my mind. First is, I hope we have you back uh, several times, right? Oh, awesome. you're awesome. Thank right. you. I love talking. But the second thing is, tell us about. You know, I've loved uh, witnessing to the explosion of, like I said, creative polymath, right? You know, you oh. you're doing your painting now. Tell us about the knitting shop because it's it's just so freaking awesome what you're doing with that. What's it called? What was the inspiration? I've read about it, but you tell us about it. Well, it's really funny. You know, I realize now that I've started so many businesses since I started <laughs> selling my own brand of pet rocks back in the 70s. <laughs> but I never knew, I didn't know the word entrepreneur. You know, I grew up, I got accepted at this prestigious university and my father said, no, you're not going. Uh, you need to get married and have children. And I, I wound up at a state school somewhere else, but like, I, I just didn't know what I didn't know. So I didn't even realize that I was a serial entrepreneur. I just, I must, I, I call it the single mother hustle. When you do not have enough money <laughs> and you don't want to work in an office, here's right. what I did. I learned everything. I taught myself to be a wedding efficient. I opened a bakery. I've now I've got the knit shop. It's the knit shop actually is because I have to do something with my money. I have to, um, the IRS loves me right now. Like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm helping to support a lot of these conservative programs that are happening because like, that's another thing I want to say to my neighbors. I, it's possible that I paid more tax this year than all of you combined. Right. And the majority of that money is going to go to the programs that you guys like to shut up, you know, I'm getting just shut up. But anyway, right. that was a side, that was a tangent. Um, the knitting shop, when I got to the house, I thought I'm going to Airbnb it, or I'm going to get a roommate, or I'm going to rent it out and I'll live in the garage. My first night here, that all went away. And I thought, 
This represents all the space that I gave to other people, primarily abusive men. As long as I can afford to be here alone, which might just be a few months, I'm going to enjoy that. And then I thought, but I still need to do something. And Nora Doc, who's a Facebook friend, I I don't think I've ever met her in person. She took up knitting, like she's a, she's a prodigy. And she said, why don't you open a knitting shop? And I said, man, Nora, I thought of that and I forgot. That's an awesome idea. And so I, you know, it's just, it's so easy because, um, because I've been knitting for 20 years and right. I, 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 I know I write, I'm a, I'm an expert in the, I'm not, I shouldn't even use the air quotes. Did you see how self-deprecating that was? <laughs> I'm actually a fiber arts um, expert. I've written a lot of books about fiber well, arts. Yeah, well, my, yeah, yeah, it's my passion. It's my right. passion. So it's very easy for me to make it into a shop. And it was also really easy because I did get so much help from the government. I got EIDL loans. I got a grant from Travis County that both of those not only allowed me to open my knitting shop, but it allowed me to, I have employees now. Yeah. I have, I have young people running the ranch. They are That's so great. stoked. Yeah. And, and I told, and I'm, I, it's like I, this opportunity, it's so fun. Yeah. And I, I, you know, I love that you're doing this because I, so many people I know, and I feel the same way. It's like, I want to make money so I can help other people make money. Like, you know, wouldn't it be great if Bezos and uh, all those guys were that way? What a, what a world it might be. So, But his ex-wife is that way. Exactly. Have, exactly. Can you help me remember her name? Because she deserves an acknowledgement. Uh, I can't think Mackenzie? Mackenzie, isn't it? Mackenzie Bezos? Yeah. I love it. And I, I think, yeah. and I think she may have switched her name back, but I love what she's doing. And I was talking to a friend of mine last night and I told her that like these little, um, little things I'm doing to like give other people a leg up. Yeah. And she was laughing and laughing. And she's like, this is the only reason I have ever wanted to make money in my life. And it reminds me of the Michelle Obama quote, which I, I'll paraphrase, like when somebody helps you through the door, oops, it cut off. Okay. Oh, there it is. Okay. Oh no. Yeah. Are we still? Are we? Oh, I, I did. That was magic. What you just did. <laughs> so it, it, um, I was just like showing when, you. It was Mackenzie Scott. Is her name? When, when? Thank you. When somebody um comes through the helps you through the door, you don't shut the door. You reach out and you help the next person through the door. Right. Right. And I feel like such a Pollyanna saying that. I do. I feel like hippie Jesus, but it's <laughs> true. It is truly what I believe in, you know, it's yeah. really what I believe in is help other people. I do not need, I have, I have, you know, Sinead O'Connor's new book. It's so beautiful. And I, I really like it so much yeah. or, if you, or listen to the audio, but it was like, um, uh, oh, what was I going to say? Oh, that her first, that record that was called, I do not want what I haven't got, which right. that actually comes, I think from the old Testament. And I, I, that is a mantra for me. I, not only do I not what, do not want what I haven't got, I have way more than I need. And it is the greatest, greatest joy to help others with it. It's so fun. Well, that's wonderful. And I think that when I'm going to have my altar set up, I have, have a special altar for you that the house stays uh, like a generator. I see it as this creative generator in uh, Smithville and transmuting all these people and all this negativity so i really so. thank you for joining us today uh, spike and i i think that um we definitely i know i definitely want to do another one there's so many different at facets to explore so yeah, if yeah you're we, willing to come back, we need to have you over for our live thing that we do on facebook on a facebook is kind of a no, no. Well, it's not uh, really Facebook. It's it, it's YouTube. Yeah, we're doing it to YouTube. And, 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 yeah. Oh, cool. And, and we repost it on Facebook for those folks. But it's live on Thursday nights, and it's a chance for you to just say whatever the hell you want. And yeah. you know, I'm I'm the editor, and I never cut out dirty words, what people call <laughs> dirty words, and inappropriate comments. Yeah. Like, they're, they're so I think dirty. He adds a few. I, actually, I exist for that kind. They need of a housekeeper, <laughs> right? <laughs> All right. Well, I would love that. Well, y'all, this was so so um, fun, and I I don't mean to self deprecate but I really am aware that once I once I once somebody hands me the mic, it's just like get out of the way. <laughs> no, it's it's great because you um, like I said that organic thing. You know, let's see where it goes. And a lot of people, 
you know, sometimes they'll just sit there and like, okay, now what do I say? You know, like, so the, yeah, I, you will never have that problem with me. <laughs> yeah, I've had a great time. So thank you so yeah. much. Bye. Thank you so much. Thanks, y'all. Have a wonderful day. Thanks. You can follow the Plutopia News Network at Plutopia.io. On Facebook, go to at Plutopia News. On Twitter, it's at Plutopia. This is the Plutopia News Network, 20 minutes into the future.